when the Spanish first came into the area and, and encountered the Indian people, and they traveled through the, the country and seen them living in the villages along the coast, they could see with their own eyes how the people were living. They were out, they were out on the boats, their, their plank canoes bringing in fish, how they stored the fish, how they survived. But they didn't want to give them the credit, so they did In other words, if I'm going to be the conqueror, I'm not going to make it look like that these guys are smarter than me. In 1769, the first Portola expedition came to California with the intention with the Catholic Church. Look for locations to build these missions along the California, Alta California. So they started out in San Diego, came all up through the up through the coast, reached Santa Barbara and San Diego, Lompoc, San Luis Obispo. Those were missions that were built within this area on the Central Coast. They, they came to this part of the world with a with a master plan, and that was to convert what they called pagans and the heathens to Christian Christianity and uh, to use these native people as a workforce to build these missions or whatever work they had, farming. When the mission was built in 1804 in San Dinez, from 1804 to 1824, he got 20 years of influence and treatment by the Spanish uh, soldiers in mission. And the one thing that the Catholic Church still does not say uh, is that they say that, that most California Indians died of the missions from disease. But we know through their journals and their words that, the, that all the Indians at all the missions worked 11, 12, 13 hour days and got very small portions of food and very poor quality of food. They never received any medical attention. We died from disease because our immune system was so weak that we were overworked and underfed. That's why we died. In 1821, the Mexican government got their freedom from Spain and took over the governing body of, of California. And so in the early years of this, the Mexican control, it was agreed upon that they, the Indian people would get their freedom and be able to own land. And the inner, if they chose, they could become Christians or they didn't have to, they could continue with their own spiritual beliefs. But, but after a few years of, of control by Mexico, the, the treatment and the uh, influence didn't change from this, what the Spanish started. So this is what uh, influenced the rebellion in 1824 because the Indian people felt they were betrayed by, by the government and they didn't, they didn't give, were not given their uh, freedom, free opportunities. February of 1824, some of the Indian people in San Barbara, San Inez, and Lompoc Mission, they were already Christianized, but they, they formed an uh, organization to rebel against the church. The revolt of 1824 uh, is, is something that, uh, as, as someone that has Shumash ancestry, one, it was just something that I was very proud of, like, yeah, you know, he, my people finally said, okay, enough is enough. We're going to stand up and, and we're going to, you know, we're, we're going to fight the, the soldiers even though they had far superior weapons. Uh, and I was very proud of that. And it took, it took strategy. It took planning. And many, it, it, the rebellion just didn't happen overnight. It took months and months of planning. But that young boy that was beaten so severely that he almost died, it was literally the straw that broke the camel's back because all of them had been beaten. All of them had, had been underfed. Uh, all of them had been worked to death. There was a young boy that had come from uh, Lompoc Mission, Purissima, to San Dinez to visit a relative of his who was imprisoned in the stockade. That whipping of that boy was, was probably what triggered off the rebellion. First, they burned down the mission in San, San Dinez and uh, from there they moved over to Lompo and joined the Lompo La Purissimo Indians and some of the Santa Barbara Indians went with them. 
My family was brought into the San Fernando Mission starting in 1803. And during the 1824 revolt, I just found out about a, a year or so ago, that a group of men from the San Fernando Mission snuck out and traveled by foot to Santa Barbara and fought in the 1824 revolt. The San Fernando Mission is 80 miles from the Santa Barbara Mission. They didn't ask the priest for permission. They were going to go fight the soldiers, so they had to sneak out at night, travel by foot to fight soldiers that had rifles and bayonets, and all they had was bows and arrows that were used for hunting. You're not going to do that if, if it's just because the food isn't served hot enough. You're only going to do that if they're treating you very poorly. The Indians dug in and they set up a fortress and was ready for the battle. 1,200 uh, Indian people that had gathered. The Mexican army didn't react immediately. They, they, it wasn't until March, almost a month later, that they came and, and attacked the Indians in Lompo. So there was a battle that went on and it lasted for several days. And uh, <clears throat> finally they over, overpowered the Indian people. I just an unfortunate wonder. So, you know, some of the greatest armies in the world were defeated by, by uh, gunpowder or powder, uh, you know, power that the other one had uh, over them, so. There were several months of uh, this constant uh, skirmishes or chasing after Indians and bringing them back by the army of uh, Mexico. They would go into the, into the hills, influence them to come back to the mission. Some of the Indian people stayed in the, over in the Central Valley, never came back. And a lot of the Indian people that lived on the missions were not willingly, they, they were not evidently not willing to convert, but they only did it to fool the church to make them think that they were, so they wouldn't be abused any, any further or their families were not hurt. A lot of the Indians came back and they were converted to Christianity and they became uh, influenced by the Mexican population. Throughout the 1800s, they were now, now uh, lost their own culture, lost their own language, lost their own traditions. The 1824 revolt uh, is, is so important uh, to, to say, uh, you know, here's a tribe of people that, not, that are not warlike. They were forced to, they had no choice. We, we have to stand up and and say, you know, no, we're not going to take this anymore. You know, when, when, when you look at, at, at the big picture, that, that, that was a bold thing. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's, there's many UMass people today that kind of have that, that, that uh, uh, I want to stand up for what's right attitude. And we got that from, from our ancestors that were involved in the 1824 revolt, our ancestors that were able to survive two of the most horrific uh, 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 times in, in, in Shumash history, the missions and then the, the, the genocide when California became a state. Yeah.